to Aston. Greetings YouTube, Dark Swordsman here, and I am back for more Final Fantasy VIII on the Nintendo Switch. And in today's episode, we are going to be beginning our journey towards the snowy regions of Estar. Now before we roll, so to speak, or before we move out, I just want to recap something I said at the end of the last episode, which is, and I quote, if you have anything left to do at this point, so if there's any side quests that you want to do before going to Esther, if there's any magics you still haven't picked up that you can get at this point, you want to go and uh, complete all of that now. Because once you go to Esther, you're not coming back for a long time. You will not get access to this lot again until towards the end of Disc 3. So we are going to be out of touch with the rest of the world for quite some time. Okay, with that now said and done, let's get going. So to get to Esther, we have got to go back to the familiar old place known as Fisherman's Horizon. That is, if I can figure out how to get out of this godforsaken um, maze of um, caves and ruins and crap. There we go. So we need to head south because the Fisherman's Horizon is on the southern side of the bridge, not the northern side. So let's head straight down. Whoops. Almost going down the wrong side. And let's go straight down the middle here. Straight down past Galabida or Galvadia, whatever you want to call it. Uh, straight down past Balam. And then we'll follow the bridge. Here it is. And once you get to Fishman's Horizon, it will automatically go into this cutscene. going to take three times speed off for a minute, otherwise we'll get through this too quickly and then it won't be a decent length um, episode. I can honestly say this is probably one of my favourite tracks from this soundtrack and it's called Love Grows. The only problem with listening to that soundtrack, well, track from the soundtrack just then, set my uh, depression off a little bit. Ugh. Let's 
So leaders coming with us. Now I know some people will level grind up either and whatnot. I'm a bit curious as to why though. I can't get my head around it. I know Fuzzfing has done a video for it. I might have to have a look into it. Mm, that's because it's camouflaged. I'll just reset my team back up a second. Okay, so here we are. Let's just do a quick game save. <coughs> so here we are in the oh, crumbs, what's it called? I'm getting my names right. Salt Lake, that's the word I was looking for. So, yeah, here we are at the Salt Lakes. And we have to journey through the Salt Lakes to get to Asta. And we do have a boss fight coming up soon as well against Abaddon, which is another undead monster. Trying to make me change my team. Right, let's go. So we're gonna make our way up this skeleton here. Let's go ahead and jump. Now, random encounters that you will get here will be the uh, lefty, righty, and fizzage. I believe you can also get blitz as well, actually. Uh, so, there is a save point to the right hand side. Um, since we saved our game recently, I'm not going to worry too much about that. And I've never been beaten by a bad one, so I'm pretty confident in my skills. 
And that's not me tooting my horn either, it's just me. This is a really cheesy way of taking them out, to be honest. Oh, there we go, we killed him. Wow, two elixirs and that was it, game over. <laughs> oh, was not expecting that. I was expecting more of a fight. Now, if you hadn't got your hands on Flare earlier on, you can get it from a Baden. Uh, once he hits between levels 30 and 9, uh, sorry, 30 and 34. will never be any higher level than 34 and his maximum HP will be 17k. Uh, you can also steal a power wrist off of him, which I forgot about. Items to be dropped after battle, flare stones. Just thought I'd give you those little tidbits of information. Still, well, I can't remember to keep that back on. I'm not going to do that. The thing is, I weren't too fussed about using the elixirs because I know I can get more later. In fact, I can get a hundred in one go. So now we just have to wait for the lift to take us up, so we can just sort of chill our beans for a minute. I don't know why I always put scroll that side, I think it's just a standard well, my immediate, sorry, my normal go-to, like, because when I first played this, I didn't know what to expect. And since, obviously, we know is currently down, my immediate reaction going into the unknown was to form a defense perimeter around her um, on my very first time playing this, because I didn't know what to expect. So by putting scroll where I did, covers all the angles against any attack but then obviously as we moved on I realised that we weren't going to be attacked and I eventually lowered my guard but ever since then it's just been a force of habit now putting scroll there Alright, oh, at this point we are going to be going into Laguna's 
fifth dream, which is quite a short one again. And we'll keep things the same as last time. It is going to mess up our Guardian forces again, unfortunately. There's no I can do about that. Well, let's get through this as quickly as we can. Now, the dialogue will be slightly different because we've done the Shumi Village side quest. First of all, and antagonize this guard here. Asshole. I enjoy kicking the crud out of these guards. This is the failure. <laughs> I don't know why Dr. Odin talks like that. this message. Down 
comes to lift. Sneaking suspicion, it's messed up my. Yeah, I thought it had. God dang it! I really wish it would stop on junctioning everything, it's so annoying. Forces and everything are all out of whack right now. We'll correct it once we're on the other side. As long as we can fight, that's the main thing for the moment. We have to be careful of those jispers because they do have the ability to use degenerator, which is basically a one-shot. There is literally no I can do against it. So we need to kill it quickly. <laughs> There's a black hole. Head on up. Head on outside. And then we need to have a little chin wag with these guys. Thank you. 
Hmm. So much dialogue to get through. believe that's the only place you can pick up that magazine so you're going to want to grab that and that's the magazine that shows you what you need for the Lionheart blade rare Lestoid There's our laser cannon. Damn. There we go. He did not want to drop. What are you saying? I do not know any Eleni. Okay, I was lying. Eleni, I know Eleni. Hey, wait, where's Eleni? <laughs> Alright, let's get going after him. Got to chase him out of here now. Normally, I would continue doing my voice acting for. Uh, doctor, it looks kind of the way he speaks, um, but I've got a bit of an ulcer on my lip right now and it is stinging me, so I'm going to have to refrain <laughs> from doing my uh, Doctor Odin voice for the time being. There's another fight.
All oh, right, we just need to tinker with this. There we go. Now we go and head back down. Alright, so now we're back with our normal team. Central's rooms go away. My oh God, would you stop trying to play with Central's rooms? My oh God, it's been a pain. Thank you. Oh no. I may have screwed up. We need the same rule. And we don't have it. All we've got is elemental. Oh, I might have screwed up royally here.
I might have to fix this mistake off camera because we need the same rule. <coughs> Um, so yeah, don't make the mistake I just made, folks. Make sure that you have the same rule. And the reason why I was playing um, Dr. Odin at cards is because he's got the rare ward card, but um, yeah. We're going to end the episode here. I'm going to fix up my mistake. And we will pick things up next time where we are going to be, first of all, getting our hands on Aurora. And two, we're going to be sorting out the card rules for the Lunar Base. I'm going to show you guys how to deal with that problem. Because you're going to want to eliminate some of the card rules up there because. Um, Eleni's got the Laguna card, and there's a guy called Pete up there who has got the Alexander card, so we do need to uh, just manipulate that a little bit. Alright, folks.